In this episode, we are going to take a deep dive into a HSC incident cost calculator, which is a very unique tool for determining cost of incident at the workplace. Now, why is this very important? As safety professionals, it is important that we always establish the business case about the importance of safety based on the financial or economic reason that accident is indeed expensive. In fact, if safety is expensive, try accident. Now, there is a popular safety slogan, and there are a lot of other theories that buttress this. For example, the most prominent of this theory is the iceberg theory, which analyzes cost of accident based on an iceberg. In fact, it makes an analogy that the cost of an accident can be likened to an iceberg, where the tip of the iceberg is the most obvious part, and it's just a little part of it, which takes into account the direct cost of accident. All right, and these are costs that are borne by the insurance company. In fact, when there is an accident at the workplace, and there is an injury, and you have to visit the hospital. Chances are that your employer has already taken an insurance policy on that, where you'll be paid some indemnity. All right, and then again, sick pay that could be borne by the insurance company. There could be medical bills. There could be first aid. You know, bills that could be borne by insurance company. There could be even workman compensation that has already been taken, so you'll be compensated as well. Public liability insurance is also taken by companies as it's a legal requirement. And these are all some of the little costs that are taken care of by the insurance company. All right, so these are all direct costs. So every cost that is borne by insurance company is a direct cost, and this is just a little. Now, the chunk of the iceberg which is hidden actually takes into account all the indirect costs and these these indirect costs could actually you know emanate from a lot of things in fact there's going to be reputational damage there's going to be loss of production there's going to be loss of profit there's going to be the need to replace workers the the fact that you need to train new set of workers the fact that you need to increase over time because remaining workers will have to work more uh, more hours there's going to be loss of production order there's going to be um, a whole lot downtime or non-productive time which could cost millions of dollars and all of that in fact depending on the scope of work these costs could be endless all right so it is always important that we as safety professionals we emphasize um, about the cost of workplace accident by doing some sort of calculation having this template that we've developed for you to be able to build that strong argument and continue to get your top management to to allocate more resources for health and safety because if you weigh the benefit of implementing a health and safety a robust health, health and safety management system that actually far outweighs the cost all right because the cost would actually cripple the business we want to make sure that there's a strong focus on the benefit of health and safety management system all right however there is a challenge where people are not able to have access to the unique tool to do that so we have developed this unique tool and that is the Incident cost calculator, which is a sect. All right, so we have the template already open here, and the template is basically helping us to calculate the cost of incident and we do some sort of analysis on it. All right, now we have the table of content, which shows the structure of the template where we have the approved list, the source data, the dashboard, the cost, or these are all reports. So the cost based on case ID, cost based on incident type, direct and indirect cost cost trend and cost impact all right now we have the approved list this is the section where we do all the work for you in fact we've taken our time to collate all the various cost of incidents and group them under direct and indirect costs all right you, you have the option to actually build on this all right so we did this based on the fact that we've categorized all the actions that we have to take following a workplace accident under various categories dealing with the accident there's, there's usually an immediate action and these immediate actions have cost elements to them and once you carry out these actions you have to allocate resources which have cost elements and for this reason there's going to be some direct cost and some indirect cost again cost of investigation after the accident also has some cost element to it again there's going to be business cost in the sense that it's going to affect the bottom line. So a lot of costs relating to business costs and all of that. So if I should take my time and go through them, dealing with the accident, first and foremost, there's going to be like, if the accident resulted in a personal injury, there's going to be first aid treatment. There's going to be the need to transport the person to the medical facility where there's actually a medevac. So there's going to be need for an ambulance or a helicopter based on the location of the incident. The person may have to be repatriated back to home country. All of these are costs. And the interesting thing is that 
uh, or the lucky part is that some of these costs are borne by the insurance company, so we classify them as direct costs. Now, there are other costs like making the area safe, fighting the fire, having to deploy fire fighting equipment to fight, and that is also going to take some time. Spill cleanup, that's also going to take some time to clean up a spill, assuming that was an environmental spill. There's going to be mid air, they, they need to stop work, all right, in order to recover from operations. Actually, there's immediate staff downtime, and that is also one of the costs. I mean, these are all classified under indirect costs, and um, they would require man hours to be deployed for that. And man hours are rated because there are man there are hourly rates for people who have to work and all of that. So, once there's an accident, all of this hourly rates against the hours that have been spent to clean up spill to do firefighting and all of these things would have to be paid for all right regardless so cost of accident investigation also include includes the fact that you need to deploy an investigation team the fact that based on your the level of incident or the severity of the incident then you could have the investigation team having to be deployed from headquarter or an off-site location because some levels of incident, for example, first aid case or medical treatment case, investigation are done by people on the site, as per investigation procedure, if yours is like that. However, fatality or, or major spills and all of that, investigation have to be deployed, investigation team will have to be deployed from headquarter to do a thorough job. All right. So we can talk about other costs like having to do meeting with stakeholders which requirement hours, having to meet up with employees to share lessons learned, having to um, meet enforcement authority, and a whole lot, business costs, the salary will have to be um, paid even when the people are on, are on sick leave, so that's sick pay, overtime costs, hiring costs, retraining of new staff, cost of you know hiring new people, and a whole lot of costs, actually. So these are costs that are endless. We even have costs relating to compensation, penalties, and all. All right, so these are costs that are endless, and we are look, we've strategically categorized them under immediate action, investigation, returning to business, repair and replacement, productivity, sanctions, and penalties. And we've already cat- uh, identified those that are direct costs, those that are, those are that are, those that are direct costs, those that, that those that are direct costs, those that are indirect costs, we've already done that. All right. So this section is actually about the impact level, and that has been classified under um, high, medium, and low. And the impact levels have been defined over here. So these are thresholds where you can actually classify a particular cost item as high, medium, or low. Over here, you have a list of incidents. You can keep building on it. If there's none, that's if we've missed one for you or whatever all right you can keep adding on so this t- section is really important because they're utilized as drop down list in this template all right in the source data you're going to be selecting some of them from a drop down list so what is important to notice is that whenever an accident happens you provide the date of the incident you give it a unique id you provide the title of the incident and then you select from the drop down list the type of incident so this in this case a lost time incident and then we provide all the actions that we have we needed to take to ensure that the incident has been addressed 100%. All right. So we go through this. We notice that we need to administer first aid. So the first aid is an immediate action, which is a direct cost. And how many hours was allocated for that? What is the hourly rate of the person who had to administer the first aid? Transporting injured person to the hospital. You are going to deploy some hourly rate for, for example, the ambulance. So we need to provide um, the hours that was deployed for that and the cost per hour for the ambulance service. Transporting the person to the home country, also there is some cost element and can be based on the hours that had to be spent on that and all of that. So over here, we've given you room for you to estimate cost based on u- per unit cost or hourly per hours or per unit and then the hourly rate and then the per unit cost all right so based on that it's going to calculate the cost and then we have the cumulative cost so take note that all these actions that we took relate to one incident as a result we are providing a unique case id so when it comes to excel if you are trying to populate the same like different rules relating to the same item we want to identify a provide a unique identification for that item all right so that is what we have here 
So this unique ID, everything here related to it. And at the end of the day, we're able to estimate the cumulative cost of the incident, which is here, all right? So the impact levels are all based on the cumulative cost. And if you started off as low cost, low impact, but as we kept adding on the action that we had to take and all the cost elements, we got into a threshold of a high impact, all right? So that's the database. And over here, we have the dashboard. So the dashboard is actually dynamic. What it's seeking to do is to give us a breakdown, the direct cost, the indirect cost, the total cost, the incident type, and the cost, the cost trend. Currently, it's based on one data point because we only input July. Over it's based on direct and indirect cost, and this is the cost based on case ID. So we can actually filter by this these things. So these are slices, all right? Now, these are individual reports which we use to make the dashboard. So one is based on the cost per case ID, cost per incident type, direct and indirect cost, cost trend, and cost impact, all right? So the cost impact is looking at the various categories of impact levels and what type of actions we're taking to account for those, you know, costs and those impact levels. So you, need, so you can see the details of the action that we, we took. That class uh, categorized this as a medium cost or the medium impact. And then these other ones. Okay. So that's pretty much what this template is all about. So the main focus is to make sure that all of this section is up to date because you can keep adding on, you know, with the list of actions and the cost element and the you classify them as, you know, direct or indirect cost, all right? Now, the database, this section, if you want to use, all you need to just get rid of this, okay? And this one as well, all right? And then once you refresh the workbook, everything is going to vanish from the templates because there's no data to report, all right? Now, if you want to quickly bring back my data, you see that everything comes back. You just refresh the workbook and everything is back, okay? Now, let me just do one um, quick thing. So uh, let's try to introduce two data points or two types of incidents. So as you mean, there was another incident that took place in December. Um, the same period, we're going to be inputting some, you know, some dates and then we give it a unique ID. So let's assume that it's the same incident, but this time around, this was a medical treatment case. Uh, the same data point, the same date, um, incident type, but this is a different type of incident all right so um that's pretty much it if i refresh or it gives us two data points right so we have incident that happened in july and december that's medical treatment cases the cost lost time injuries is a cost incident trend from the cost trend from july to december you can see if you put some data points in there for example if i add a label add a data label i can actually estimate the cost so if if um i could you know show show the the cost so that's pretty much it direct and indirect cost incident based on case id you can see this is a unique case this is a unique case and there's a cost and direct and indirect cost so that's what this template is all about it's very, very dynamic all right so this is what you can actually use to build a database over time to justify to your stakeholders that the cost of incident is on an ascendance, okay? It's increasing from a certain level to a higher level, and it is important that we do things right by allocating more resources so that we do not have to cease operation or, you know, cease to exist as a company. If you, in case you're interested in this deploy, you need to just click on this link. It's going to take you to a dedicated page where you can actually, you know, go through the checkout process, all right? So thank you for your attention and speak again soon in another video. Bye for now.